you were just the first one here, Sarah. So when I came in, it just automatically admitted me. Oh, well, that's cool. It just said for me, I had to wait for the host. So maybe you were the host. Apparently, I'm a host. There you go. Okay. Every time I'm here today, thank you. This meeting is being recorded and a recording will be shared with everyone who has registered for the meeting. Um, and um, we would like to begin today by acknowledging the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians people, traditional custodians of the land on which the Gardner Institute resides and pay our respects to their elders past and present. And we extend that respect to all indigenous peoples here today. So with that, um, I will say, please, um, we do want this to be interactive and um, we wanna make sure that we answer your questions, but we will stop for questions. Please feel free to post any of them in the chat and we will make sure that we cover them. Um, and so I wanna start today by just telling you a little bit about um, the Gardner Institute and who we are. We are a 24, nearly 25 year old nonprofit organization. We are located in Brevard, North Carolina in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. And our mission um, at the Gardner Institute is here on the slide, and I'll just recap it for you, is that we are dedicated to partnering with colleges, universities, and philanthropic organizations individual educators and other entities to increase institutional responsibility for improving outcomes associated with teaching, learning, retention, and completion. And through our efforts, the Institute strives to advance higher education's larger goal of achieving equity and social justice. So I would like to introduce you today to our um, presenters. And um, I will ask them to, sorry, introduce themselves and to tell us all a little bit about why uh, they are drawn to the work um, in first year and um, how they came to be in this place. So I will start by introducing Brent Drake. Hello everyone, thank you, Katie. Uh, as Katie mentioned, my name is Brent Drake. I am the Senior Vice President for Operations and Research here at the Gardner Institute. And as to why uh, I am, I'm drawn to this work, uh, when I completed my master's degree, I went out and spent about six years in private industry getting progressively more miserable as I uh, worked in an industry where it really had no mission other than making money. And when I uh, managed to get back into higher education, I uh, got into a position at Purdue University with a set of grant programs that grew up to be a lot of the first year and overall student success initiatives at Purdue University. And uh, it really sparked a passion in me in, into being able to do something that I could believe in and a mission I could believe in again. Uh, and that is really through my roughly 23 years in higher education, uh, mostly around institutional research has been my guiding light in terms of focusing around that student success. Uh, and I am going to pass it to my colleague, uh, Dr. Koch. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sarah Steinkoch, and I'm a fellow at the Gardner Institute. And the why this for me, um, I've spent 30 years in the service of students in teaching and administration and student service roles. Uh, some of that was spent teaching a first year course of 485 students for the School of Business. Uh, mm -hmm which was fabulous. And I was one of those people who loved college and had a great experience and knew that I wanted to pursue this for life. Um, I was a business student uh, that found my way into higher ed as a business and have been in ever since. Uh, my second set of lenses is as a parent of in the past uh, five years, I've had four first year students. So um, I'm getting it from all sides, you might say, and I'm really happy to be with you and looking forward to um, the work that we're doing. And I will pass it to Steph Foot. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I will say that I can't come anywhere close to the credibility that Sarah has 
given the experience she's had over the last four or five years with her own with their own children. I still have a long way to go with my daughter. She's only three and a half. <laughs> but one day, I hope I'll remember the the wise uh, sage counsel that I've received and and impart that on her as she enters her first year experience. So I'm Steph uh, Foot, as I like to go by, or Stephanie, and um, I, at the risk of discrediting myself. Um, I will share with you all, I had an academically disastrous first year of college. Um, and after I you know, got back on my feet, um, thankfully, and ended up at another institution, I decided that I would dedicate my life, really, and my professional career to um, helping students to navigate to and through the first college year. And so a lot of my professional practice as um, a staff member, an administrator, and then as a faculty member has been focused on the first college year and the foundational college experience, and then a large part of my scholarship too, in addition to the scholarships that I have around the transfer student experience, which is another transition that's very near and dear to my heart. So I wanna go ahead and, and get us uh, started into a little bit more about the academy. Um, but I want to reiterate what my colleague Katie said at the beginning. We do want this to be more of a conversation. Obviously, we want to share with you all some information about the Academy and give you some of the basics. But then if there are questions that you have or things that you want to know more about, we'd love to hear those. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat or at any point you can unmute yourself and ask a question if you would prefer to do it in that fashion. I'm, I'm going to do a quick check. I don't think that our colleague, Dr. Felita Williams, is with us. I'm looking through the participant list. She was um, going to be joining us from another meeting that she's at um, in her full-time job. So I don't see her yet, but if any point she does join us, then we'll turn things over to her so she can introduce herself. The first thing we wanna talk about is this opportunity. Now I'm assuming that probably all of you are here because you to have a specific why that has compelled you to want to know more about this academy on the first college year. And as we were putting together this presentation and as we've been working on the curriculum and content for the academy, you know, I've been reminded that uh, the opportunity is one that's been a long, documented for a long time in American higher education. Uh, first year seminars have existed for many years, but on the screen, there is an image of the cover of a book that John co-authored in was and it was published in 1989. And in it, this um, the screenshot comes from the preface. It says, "Why write a book about the first year of college? The first year is hardly a new phenomenon." And then it goes on to say, "As high high school enrollments have declined, colleges have not only intensified their recruitment of prospective freshmen, but have also increased efforts to retain students once they have enrolled. Because retention research tells us the first, the first year of college is crucial to college success, we need to know more about who freshmen are and how uh, and why they stay or leave. So this passage, this part of the preface, could, be, could have been written you know, last week. <laughs> it could have been written today. If you've looked at the Chronicle of Higher Education or Inside Higher Ed, you see, you've seen, and I think all of you probably heard too, the demographic cliff that we're entering. So it's a critical time for us to recruit and retain first year students, but it's not a new issue. It's not a new issue or challenge in higher education. What we're proposing though, through this academy, and I think what you'll see over the next few minutes through the structure and process that we've developed is what I think exciting because we're not just going to look at you know, these same sort of problems and approach them in the same way that we always have. What we want to do is to really think about how we can be innovative, how we can think differently about the first college year. And that's what we hope to inspire you all to do through the process that we've created and the materials and information we've curated and the conversations that we'll have. And lest anyone think that this, again, is something that's um, just sort of like come to light, even since 1989 to present. This um, screenshot now is from a report that was published in 1928 about orientation courses for college freshmen, and it documents some of the initial outcomes uh, within the University of California system based on the work that they were doing there with their orientation courses, which you know became first-year seminar courses. 
So again, this is not a new challenge, but the opportunity here is to think about what we might do differently instead of you know, do, re, doing the th things that we've been doing over and over again, but thinking differently and thinking how we might be innovative moving forward. So now I wanna turn it over to my colleagues, uh, Brent and Sarah, who are going to talk through the approach that we'll take and give you a sense of what the content will um, entail for the Academy. Thanks, Steph. So the approach uh, that we took when we we're developing this is, is a focus on capitalizing on a deep set of experiences that are available through the colleagues at the Gardner Institute, the research, the scholarship, and the practices that um, we have brought forward. And um, we were thinking, how can we develop that into something that would be really useful and innovative as people are considering what to do with that first year? Uh, we also wanted to focus on providing an opportunity that is contained within a reasonable time frame. So Steph will talk more about this, but we're talking about essentially a month's time. And we wanted to be very mindful of the resources, both human and financial, that an institution would have to put forward in order to um, participate with us. So we have considered all of these pieces when we're putting this together. And then finally, the Academy is really intended to help teams examine, plan, and prepare for a transformation in their first year. So it's a plan to plan, and that is the way we're looking at this and hoping to engage you in the work. And so I will turn it over to Brent now to talk a little bit more in detail about what that means. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, so here you see on the screen are uh, outcomes that uh, we have associated with the Academy for the participants. The first being that uh, we hope uh, once someone has gone through this, they uh, have a firm grasp and understanding of the theories, the policies, and the research uh, confirm best practices that are out there surrounding student success in the first year of college. Also that you'd have a better understanding and be able to describe the diversity of first year students at your institution and uh, be able to access the data that helps you with that. Uh, and also be able to uh, identify the equity gaps uh, the differential in student outcomes that occur uh, for different sets of students within the first college year. Um, as a part of participating in the academy, you will conduct an audit uh, to, that will review all of the policies and practices and the programmatic efforts that are available on your campus that are targeted around first year student success. And using that, you'll commit to a plan. So this gets at, as Sarah talked about, the idea of planning to plan. You'll commit to a plan to improve those experiences for the students uh, at your institution. So when we're talking about the content we'll uh, deliver, there are four modules uh, that we'll go through. And the titles for them are, are here, as you can see. And the first one, the how well do you know your first year students, is really focusing around uh, two things. First, uh, talk about the foundation of the modern first year student movement and the underpinning, underpinning theories of student success that have gone into it. And then also looking at the information and data that are both publicly available and that you can hopefully access more at your institution to be able to see uh, who your first year students are now, how that might have changed over uh, the last decade or so, and where that might be going in terms of student demographics in the future. The second module, which you see is titled What Compromises the Academic Experience in the First College Year, is really examining the totality of that academic experience for the first year students. So we're not just speaking about the first year seminars that often get discussed when uh, talking about the first college year experience, but looking at the entire academic uh, course foundation. So really 
those gateway courses that students participate in uh, in their first and second years and examining the policies and practices and uh, outcomes that uh, occur around that at your institution. Next in the how do you create a supportive, inclusive and responsive environment, we'll focus on an examination, excuse me, examination of the co-curricular initiatives in services that have historically addressed student life moving towards efforts to create uh, a, a more uh, inclusive community and in uh, increasing our students' sense of belonging at our institutions. You'll examine what services and initiatives you have on your campus and how they work to help foster those inclusive environments for your first college year students. And finally, on the what happens after the first year, we'll examine what institutions do to help with the transition of students from their first college year into their, into their second. For example, how we welcome students into their academic majors. Also, during that last module, the participants will share the results from uh, their experience of auditing the first year of college at their institution and talk about their plans for their next steps to improve upon it. Thank you, Brent. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take Dr. Williams part because it looks like she's unable to join us. She's been caught up in her work meeting. So um, just know that um, Dr. Williams would be a much more dynamic and engaging speaker on this particular topic, but I'm going to try to do my best to do it justice. So um, the why. We've given you a little taste. We haven't yet told you about everything we're going to do and how we're going to do it in the academy, but you can see what our focus is, and we'll talk more about the logistics of that in just a minute. But I think it's really important to go back to the why. Why is this important? Why is this particular experience important? So I shared with you the opportunity. The opportunity is, you know, for us to think differently about this challenge uh, that we've, you know, been wrestling with for many, many years in American higher education and, you know, in higher education sort of writ large. So there is, though, some urgency. You know, I referenced the demographic cliff that we're entering. And there are all sorts of other impediments, you know, that, that we might consider when we think about the first year. And then there are things that we can consider that really make this urgent now. So we think that there are many reasons, and I'll just share with you some of, some of those reasons why this is important now. So in terms of the enrollment and the demographic cliff that we're all facing, you know, we know that there are declining enrollments within the pipeline, so looking at K through 12. And so obviously there's a finite number of students who are coming to us in the first year. But also, as you all know, there's been a tremendous impact, you know, when we think about COVID on learning and outcomes associated with learning. But also there are Im impacts on health and well-being that, you know, influence student transition and success in the first college year. And so this is an opportunity for us to tackle some of those challenges as we rethink what we're doing in the first year and not just in a first year seminar. As Brent mentioned, you know, we're looking at things that comprise the entire academic experience. We're looking more holistically at the co-curricular experience of these students and thinking about what we can do differently to be responsive to individual needs in the moment. Ensuring that, you know, our student populations, that students who graduate from our institution can be prepared to earn a living wage. And that's critical now, especially, but it, it's been important for a long time, but certainly very important now, you know, given some of the economic challenges that, that individuals are facing. And then, of course, there are lots of, of needs uh, for returning students. We know that um, with a finite number of, of new first-year students coming directly from high school to college, that we're, rec we're relying more now on other populations of students, some of whom are adult students, maybe transfer students. They have unique needs. Um, and although our focus is not necessarily on those individuals, we certainly will be talking about and thinking about, you know, some of the different demographic breakdowns of the individuals that comprise our first year students as we learn more about who our first year students truly are and become more familiar with our institutional data as well as some of the national data. And of course, you all have lots of other considerations. There are things that are compelling you to be here with us today. 
and certainly would help help to drive the kinds of things that you might think about doing as and even after we engage in the academy. So we think that this is important again, because it's an opportunity to really look at and think through who your students are and to better understand how they identify and what their needs are. So we can create more engaging and responsive environments to look at some of the proven strategies. And we're not gonna jump directly to the strategies and approaches, but I think you know, taking a very intentional approach you know, in this and thinking about, again, the things that are very responsive to student needs and thinking about the ways in which we can innovate too to meet the needs of our students. And then of course, we think of this as an important opportunity and part of the why and the why of the Academy is because you have an opportunity to become part of this network. So we'll be establishing a cohort. You'll work with your peers, both within and beyond your institution in this Academy to create you know, these plans to conduct your institutional audit, but then to talk about what you're learning and observing and think through what your next steps might be. All the while you have us and others who will be helping to really facilitate that learning process. And we'll share more about our broader network that we refer to a few times in just a few minutes. I think now I wanna turn it back over to Katie. And um, she's gonna share with you some of what our other Academy participants have gained from their experiences. Because of course, this is our inaugural um, offering of the Academy on the first college year. We don't have any participant perspectives yet, but Katie will share with you what others have learned through their experiences. Thank you, Stephanie. And as Steph said, the um, this is our first um, cohort in the um, Academy on the first year of college, and I'm certain not our last. Um, and but we wanted to share. Sometimes we get the question of like, what can be accomplished in four or five weeks? So here are some um, examples of what participants in other academies have said. And I'm not going to read them to you, but they the the. The census is that participants in our academies do find that it is a very valuable experience and that um, in four to five weeks, they are able to understand the data, their own student data better in order to utilize it to create a plan to improve one, some aspect of their um, institution, in this case, the first year. So, so we know that, that institutions are finding it very valuable. And we have had a variety of all types of institutions participating in our academies from R1s, small independents, uh, two-year, four-year, for-profit, not-for-profit. So if there's an if there is a need for you to talk to somebody at an institution that is a similar type to yours, we can always um, go ahead and find somebody so you can find out what their experience was. So next, I have the pleasure of talking about our team. And um, at the risk of making anybody sound old, I would say that if you add up the years of these seven people, you will find a not a deeper bench in higher education on this topic of first year. So we have John Gardner and Betsy Barefoot, who are the founders of the Gardner Institute, who have over 50 years each in um, this work and um, Drew Koch, who is our CEO, who also has, I think, 30 to 40 years experience. So very deep bench, as well as the people that you met earlier and Dr. Felita Williams, who was not here. So if you're looking for expertise and if you're looking for people who know the first year, you really have found an amazing team of just well-versed and really, I, I am very lucky to call them colleagues. So I would say that if you have any questions about our team, please ask them, but you will be well served with them. So now I think I'm gonna pass it to Steph to talk about your team. Thank you so much, Katie. And yes, I'm so excited to talk about your team. So you've heard about who will be facilitating this academy. It is a four week experience. And in a few minutes, we have some other logistical details. But as you're thinking about this opportunity, uh, we would invite you to consider who might comprise your team. And on the right-hand side of the screen, um, we have a question, who should participate? And with some examples of the types of roles and responsibilities that you might consider 
including in your team. So we're thinking that, you know, for most institutions, a team of about three to five is um, sufficient. You want to make sure there's some representation, but because this is a four-week intensive experience, um, it may not be feasible to have a 20-person committee, um, but you might go back to your institution and use the smaller committee to create a larger committee, you know, based on um, what your plan of action is. But really, ultimately, we want anyone who cares about the first college year. We think that that's most important, that you have those champions and you identify them and that you incorporate them and involve them in, in this team that you'll be comprising. And then for your consideration, you might think about the faculty who teach gateway or introductory courses, general education courses at your institution, first year seminar administrators and instructors, obviously, um, institutional research staff, because often they are the gatekeepers of the information that is so essential um, for us to better understand not only who our students are, but the ways in which they are advantaged or disadvantaged or how they can be successful or unsuccessful, you know, within our courses and at our institutions. And oftentimes, you know, they, they are rich resources, not only for the data, but for ideas too. Chief academic officers and their staff, students who are engaged in this work, who may be involved in committees, um, you may have student peer leaders or student assistants, tutors, or supplemental instruction leaders who would be ideal for this. Student success staff as well, um, and deans and department heads. So that's just a, a sampling of who you might include. But if you have questions you know, about your own institution, then we would be very happy to help you think through who you might invite to be a part of, of your team. So about three to five, but you certainly could have a couple more. Um, but that's that's sort of a sweet spot, we think, for the, the teams based on the time commitment that we're talking about here. On that note, I probably should talk very quickly about the time commitment, and then I'll turn it to Katie to talk about the fees. Um, but the Academy details in terms of the timing of this, we're uh, launching the Academy March 6th. We'll open up Module 0 at the end of February. We have a pretty quick turnaround for our applications. Um, March, I'm sorry, February 22nd um, is the, the deadline for applications. And this is the link. And Katie will talk more about that in just a few minutes. But the time commitment, um, the Academy is comprised of asynchronous content that will be delivered in a learning management system, D2L Brightspace, that you'll engage with. And then there are synchronous meetings. And the synchronous meetings will be an opportunity to bring the asynchronous content to life by hearing from experts. This is where Betsy, John, Drew, and others will be involved and engaged. And it's a place where you all will be involved and engaged too in the conversations. So the synchronous meeting schedule is on the slide here. The sessions will be recorded and the recordings and resources will be posted in Brightspace shortly after the meetings. So you'll see there's one meeting for each module. And as Brent mentioned, there is a, a presentation part of it. The last session will have an opportunity to talk about and share what you've learned in the experience and what you think your path forward might be. So we have a little gallery walk presentation we're planning. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Katie to talk about the fees and the application process. Thank you, Steph. So in order to apply, it is a very simple application process. You can go to myjngi.org. And if you don't have an account on the platform, if this is the first time you're engaging with the Gardner Institute, you simply set up an account and then choose which um, academy or process you want to apply for. In this case, it would be the academy on the- You know about the Gardner Institute? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's something for about, about AI. Um, if you don't mind um, muting, thank you. Um, so you'll, you'll complete the application. It's about four questions. Um, and once you've applied, we will review your application, approve it, and send you an agreement. So a very simple process. We do want to say the fees are based on your undergraduate enrollment. We are able to split the fees over two fiscal years if that um, is beneficial to you. And um, the enrollment bans and fees are listed here on um, this website or on this slide. And we um, they are also listed on our website. So if you have any questions about those, you can always email us. We'll have our contact information at the end. 
So we did want to just put this a little bit in context of the work that the Gardner Institute does. We have um, quite a few academies that are a similar process to this that are um, focused on things like equity and retention and teaching and learning. And then we also have processes that are a deeper dive into different topics that really are leading towards um, institutional transformation. And so those are listed here. They are all um, available on our website. And if you have questions and you're unsure about where really where is the right fit for you, if you reach out to me or info at jngi.org, we can set up a conversation and help you figure out where the right place is for you to be at this time to make sure we're meeting your needs. And I did, as the Director of Marketing and Communications, it's always my job to give a little plug for the other things that are happening. So we did want to tell you about the Symposium on Transforming the Foundational Post-Secondary Experience. This is a two-day in-person in, in symposium held in Asheville, North Carolina. Each participant will pick one track. One of those tracks is the first year. And um, you'll do a deep dive into one aspect of the first year. So people always ask the difference between the academy and the symposium. The academy is a curriculum that is based on the entirety of the first year. And the symposium is your opportunity to bring in as an individual or as a team to come and really do a deep dive on one aspect in your first year um, program. So um, so we would love to have you join us. Um, I will pass it back to Steph to handle questions. Thank you so much, Katie. And we've talked a lot. And so now we would love to hear from you all. And if there are questions that you would prefer to ask of us personally, we can also stay on the line. And we are happy to pause the recording too, because we know sometimes you don't want your questions preserved for eternity. <laughs> So feel free, though, to put questions in the chat, or if you'd like to unmute, we would be very happy to answer any and all questions. Stephanie, I wonder if you can just go over a minute about um, what module zero is and um, how people will get started. And then I see we have a question in the um, chat as well. Yeah, sure. Yes. And then there, there was maybe a hand up too. So we'll, we'll get to everyone. Um, so when you are beginning the journey, you'll get a, a message from us with access to um, start here module that lives outside of the platform and also within the platform, the learning management system that we're using with instructions on how and where to get started. And it provides information about the synchronous meeting. And then module zero, once you're officially in Brightspace, um, which will open around February 27th, uh, will give you access to um, the syllabus again, but also a foundational reading um, that we'd like everyone to read. It's a, just a short piece that John and Drew co-authored and a few other resources. Um, but the Start Here module really helps you to know how to navigate. So again, you'll get that via email that includes directions on how and where to get into uh, the learning management system. It includes a copy of the syllabus and some of the synchronous meeting information that's also repeated in module zero. So we're taking a two-step approach. I find this to work very well with students too. Like give them some instruction first before you ask them to get into the learning management system. Sometimes get that first step getting into it is, is the hardest <laughs> than knowing where to go. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. And the question, uh, the question I see in the chat is how many institutions are typically part of a cohort? And this is our uh, first offering of the uh, academy on the, the first year. So we 
obviously don't know exactly uh, we will have uh, uh, typically, but we expect it to be similar to, for instance, our Equity and Retention Academy, which has run uh, typically around 15 to 20 institutions in, in a cohort. Um, so we suspect we'll be around that same range. Yeah, it looks like there's another question in the chat, and there was also a hand up, so I just want to make sure that the person who had their hand up doesn't still have a question or comment they wish to make, and then we'll get to the chat. I had my hand up, but I dropped my question in the chat. Okay, okay, <laughs> perfect. I, well, I was hoping that might be the case. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> So Anthony said, I teach in and am the a director in the first year bridge program that's working on a program redesign Would the Institute help our team develop and refine an individual redesign plan as part of the curriculum. I think that's an excellent question and there may be others in the virtual audience um, and or those who are watching the recording who find themselves in a similar position. So I think the answer is yes, you know, we're looking at the totality of of the first year experience. And we are asking you to do an audit that would extend beyond, you know, this first college year. I'm sorry, that would extend beyond a thing within the first college year to look at, you know, everything. But in terms of like the plan moving forward and applying the learning, you certainly could do that, you know, in terms of like the redesign of a program, or if you're in an academic department, we had a group that joined us um, from an institution and, and they were, all in one academic department and they want to restructure, you know, the first year experience for the students in that particular major. And so they absolutely could do that too, you know, within the context of, of this experience. As Katie said, also in our symposium, you know, there's an opportunity to look at and take a deep dive into one aspect, you know, of your first year. So that could be another place so if you had a team of like three to five from your institution, Anthony, that went through this with us, then you know you could engage the same people or other people in the symposium, and they could also do kind of complementary work, but learning you know from some of the other experts and from other peers that will convene you know within that track. So I think there's an opportunity there to do both, but you definitely could focus on that that bridge uh, redesign. And um, Lester has a question. You want to take that one, Brent? Yeah, but the, uh, there was one actually before that, Brian, uh, that we missed. So do your oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. curriculum for institutions that already have a first year program wanting to develop it or more for ones that are trying to establish one for the first time or either slash both. And uh, I would respond to that, that both. Uh, fit absolutely within this. So whether you have an established program or you are trying to get one established, we think there's value in uh, the topics we're discussing since we're looking at uh, really the kind of that whole experience in the first year and the best practices that are out there. So if you have a development, a developed program, you might hear something of, oh, here's a way we might want to tweak or refine it. And if you're starting from scratch, you'll get a, a an opportunity to hear what a lot of best practices are uh, that are out there. Thank you, Brent. And then it looks like there's a question from Lester about criteria in deciding the first cohort. Um, <laughs> to be completely honest, it's a lot of first come first serve. <laughs> so we uh, have, have the deadline uh, date. And if demand is large enough that we need to think about uh, splitting it out into multiple cohorts, and maybe offer a, a different uh, timing or something of that nature, we'll discuss it then. Uh, but it, it is going to be a lot about uh, who, who is completing those applications at, uh, first. Other questions or comments? Oh, looks like there's one from Jeffrey. 
Uh, we may be facing a transition from trying to guarantee that every student is included in a HIP to creating curated experiences for first year students that can connect pre-selected classes and co-curricular activities. Are there data tools to evaluate both expense and outcomes that you will be able to recommend or guide us through? That's a big question. <laughs> so in terms of outcomes, I would say that Yes, there, um, there, there are some that are uh, existing in the public domain, but really the best is going to hopefully be uh, existing at your institution. Most institutions have something that would allow for an examination there, and we will talk about uh, where those might live and how you get access to those uh, at your institutions as, as a part of this. Um, to be completely honest, I will say expenses is not something that often gets examined as much in, in the data. There are some examples out there where, where it's there, but it, it's not quite as common. But based upon the, the same areas that would do the outcomes would be the areas that could quite possibly help on the uh, expense examination. And so fostering that kind of relationship might uh, make it possible to, to look at that as well. On the topic of assessment, I see there's a question from Lisa. Will there be opportunities for developing assessments of the first year programming using SLOs? And the answer is yes. So if there are, are particular things that you're coming to wanting to learn how to do or to have space and time to create, like, you know, a authentic assessment of student learning outcomes, you know, for your various uh, first year programs, that could be part of your plan. It could even be something that you set out to do intentionally as a team. You say, that's what we want to leave with. And then maybe the plan is to implement that, you know, within all of the different dimensions of the, the first year programming that you offer. And so the, the design of the academy is such that um, I think there's, there's flexibility. We've got the modules and we've got content, we have these synchronous meetings, but you'll be able to articulate to us if there are particular projects or, or things that you want to tackle like this. And also, you know, like the other things that we've heard about, um, maybe redesign of a bridge program or thinking through, you know, how to restructure high impact practices or creating many high impact practices for your first year students. And we'll be able to provide you with some consultation um, on, on where you might go to get some resources for that, or we might be able to help you to some extent you know, with that as you're kind of working through it in the context of the academy. I don't wanna over promise completely, but we have so much expertise you know, within the facilitators and a lot of us have, um, in this case, a lot of outcome you know, data experience assessment experience that I think you would definitely find what you're looking for. And we'll have a network too that we can draw from of all of you. Are there questions or comments? Stephanie, I don't have a question. This is John Gardner. I just yeah, like John. Say, uh, yeah, I just like to say that um, this is going to be a pretty in, intimate experience. Um, you know, we really personalize it and uh, we maximize uh, you know real time live interaction with the uh, you know online components of this. But the main thing I want to say is that I just look forward to being a part of this and interacting with uh, my colleagues who are just wonderful and. Um, I'm at the point in my life now where I learn from them. And um, and if I learn from them, will too. I can promise you that. Well, I'm excited because we're gonna learn from each other. And I, I think that's one of, uh, selfishly, that's one of the things I always look forward to with these experiences is the opportunity to learn from and be inspired by, by everyone you know within the group.
So if there are no other questions, we will stick around for a few minutes. So if anyone has a question that they prefer to ask us, you know, one-on-one -on -one or two or three with one, we'll be very happy to answer those questions. I think um, the follow-up will be, you'll receive a copy of the recording and the slides uh, with a link to the application. So if you're interested and Katie put in the chat, the email address that you can direct questions to info at jngi.org. We'd be happy to entertain any questions you have. And again, we'll hang out here for a few minutes to see if anyone has anything they'd like to ask us personally. Thank you all so much for your time and hopefully we'll see you in our first cohort. Thank you all very much.